Brings us to First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Minnesota Vikings and the Cleveland Browns. Cade York set to do the honors here, and we are underway from Cleveland. Kenny Nwagu now out of his end zone. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be, but still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. First and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 19. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. to the ground, Cook, and they go the wrong way here, knocked back to the 20. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. On third down, Cousins. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. And he is going to be stopped at the 12, short of the first down. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area. But they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal.
very lengthy opening drive as this will be play number 12 coming on third and goal. Throwing his cousins. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Vikings post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Joseph connects on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. On the return from his end zone is Grant. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped it to 23. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at their own 23. Now a play fake, and it's Watson out to his left. A quick throw knocked away, hits incomplete. And the end result of that play, you're almost not sure what you really want because when he gets outside of the pocket, you actually hold your breath because you think he's going to run for big yardage. But when he chose to pull it down and throw it, and a play was made to knock it away, that's a pretty good end result. Trying here for Bryant, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And the Vikings are going to take possession of the football. Offensively, when you see cover two, the thought has to go through the quarterback's head, drive the football when making throws. It's not just the deep guys covering. It's the guys underneath you have to be careful of. Drive your throw. Otherwise, you see what results? Interceptions. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. And that's a good job there by the corner. We do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, short tackle. Catch is made here by Earl Smith, Jr. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. A gain there of 21 yards. Now a first and 10 at the 11. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. Four yards remain for second down. They'll try to middle with Cook. Four yards on the play. That's going to lead to first and goal. And that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add in a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Cousins on the keeper, and he'll get in. He's over for the touchdown. The sneak successful from a yard out, and the Vikings have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Joseph connects on the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. On the return from his end zone is Grant. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The Browns drive about to get started. And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So, decent-sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words, early on. So, they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? Or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? 
39 yards the distance covered on the catch and run. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. To throw is Watson. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field. It took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Throwing again is Watson. Now he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. And the Vikings are going to have the football here at their own 35-yard line. So rare to see any quarter.